Okay, here we are. Oh my God. I mean, welcome back to the Dirty Pocket, folks, after a week off. And I'll tell you, the pocket got crowded this week. (laughs) (laughs) We are going to talk some football and we brought in a guest, someone that I was just introduced to by means of the scout. Daniel Kelly, my co-host, I am Stacey Bauman, and we are welcoming in Roberto Machelli. 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 Sorry, I'm not going to. Machelli. There you go. Live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So now you've got people in every corner of this, almost every corner of this guy. I guess you're not really in a corner, but yeah, close. So I'm out here on the West Coast, out Pacific Northwest. Daniel's in the Florida Keys, and Roberto now is representing the Northeast in the football spectrum and the dirty pocket. Dirty. So welcome, Roberto, welcome in, my friend. Yeah, thank you for having me, Stacy, And obviously, thank you, Daniel, for the welcome, you know invitation and introductions. And I was just going to say, it's like we're in the triangle. You know, you got the West, the, <laughs> that, the South, and the Northeast. So, or Middle that East, sounds... as a buddy of mine joked and called it one time. He said, that you're not sounds... Northeast, you're Middle East. Absolutely. That sounds almost like a creative blitz package. We're coming, we're coming in hot. We're coming in hot this week. And before we begin really quickly, Roberto, I've known you for, for our listeners and, and those who are watching, I've known you now for, for a decade, really. Yeah. Um, and, we, and we've talked online and, you know, let me kind of share with our listeners. Can I, Stacy, for a minute, kind of share the backdrop of the story, how we met? If I say no, will it stop you? No. Uh, of course. <laughs> So yeah, the scout. They, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you always talk about the Rams, so this is my time. Okay. So, anyways, so so we're at the NFL Scouting Combine. I was invited in uh, to speak uh, for Sports Management Worldwide. They had a scouting conference. Where were we at? Like the Hyatt or Hilton was a conference room, and you know they invited me in to share my story, how I got into the NFL. So I did that, and afterwards we had a chance to kind of meet everybody in the auditorium. Everyone's coming up and talking, and you know everybody was like, you know, how do I get in the NFL? What do I got to do to get in the NFL? That's a really cool story. Do I write a book like you? What do I got to do? And I'm like, you know, I was like, you know, but but it it was amazing to me, you know, and to our listeners was that everybody who I talked to that day who came up to me, all the students and, you know, uh, you know, the the potential scouts and agents and trainers, everybody came up to me that day. Really, nobody really believed it was possible to get into the NFL. Like, Like they're like, do you really think I can do this? And then I met Roberto and, and he was like, right off the bat, he's like, I can do this. I can do this. What do I got to do? Tell me what I got to do. I know I can work in the NFL. I was like, you know what? Listen, I need your phone number because nobody talks like this. The confidence that you had Roberto at that point. I mean, all I've ever dealt with is hall of famers. All I've ever been around. I've been blessed to be around the Tony Dungy's and the bill Parcells and the bill Belichick's and, you know, Mark Tressman has been a friend of mine for 25 years and Andy Reed and all these people I've known. So I've always only been around the, the, you know, the all-stars of the game. So when somebody strikes me as having that component to them and having what it takes, it's just instant. It's like almost like when Bill Parcells met Charlie Weiss in a health club. They met and, and they were taking a sauna together. And, you know, Charlie Weiss was like, you know, and next thing you know, he's the offensive coordinator. And and, and, and he becomes the head coach of Notre Dame. So that's how you struck me, Roberto. You were well, so you. super impressive that, I mean, it's, it's, I, it's an honor to have you on the show talking ball. But, yeah, I want our listeners to know that, that uh, you know, you really believe that you can make it into the National Football League. And that's exactly what, what it takes to be a scout in the NFL is having that belief. Thank you. No, wait a minute. We gotta wait. We we gotta we gotta clarify. You guys didn't meet in a sauna, right? <laughs> no. Like, uh, okay. I was no, gonna no, say, no. well, you guys are drawing like X's and O's in the steam <laughs> on a mirror or something. No, What's no, going no, no. on here? Okay. <laughs> play action. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Play action. That is yeah, that is great. That was part. That was in Charlie Weiss. <laughs> I'm still not in the NFL for the record, but it's still like I even told Daniel. It's still something I think about often. It's something that. You know, lifelong, long-term goal, whatever way you want to label that. But that's something I think of often. I, I watch the draft a lot. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just one of those type of people that I get into the X's and O's of kind of the poker game of the draft. So I, I enjoy that that piece of it. So I got my nephew into it. He's now 18 years old, but he's a little draft guru himself. So, you know, if he's out there listening. 
Taylor knows I love it. stuff too. So the draft is a uh, national holiday in this house. Like it is pr outside of winning Super Bowls, which the world champion Los Angeles Rams did this year. Uh, the NFL draft is my next favorite thing. Absolutely love it. So that's super cool. So you guys have been friends a long time. You guys both share the dream of getting to that NFL level. Uh, Daniel spent some time there. Roberto, you're on your way. You got to speak it into existence. Yes, um, but are you are you a Steelers fan? Yeah, um, I, you know, born this is just going to be raw. No, born okay. and raised in Pittsburgh. I mean, it's it's almost you know you, you start walking at a certain age and you start rooting for the Steelers not too long after. Um, however. I'm a big NFL fan in general, so I'm not just like one of those guys that, oh, they're not playing the Steelers. I don't care. I'll watch. I, I like the, the game in general. So it's nice to I, – I root for certain players. I, I watch guys in college thinking, okay, I think he's going to be a guy that can, you know, make some noise at the next level. So, you know, just because somebody gets drafted to the Cincinnati Bengals doesn't mean they're dead to me type thing. So, so, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's a competitive division. Very competitive division. I want to welcome in our very loyal listener and watcher, MTO, after hey. a week when we didn't show up. MTO yeah. is in here. Strange bedfellows indeed. We're talking steams and saunas and offensive uh, schemes. I don't know what's going on here. Um, <laughs> but, hey, it's, been uh, that kind of, it's been that kind of a week in the NFL, so it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, so I want to start there and uh, ask both you gentlemen. Um, it, it seems as though something happened with the New York Jets these last couple of days. Um, a quarterback that the scout has done a lot of film work on and has been particularly fond of out of New York, formerly by way of BYU, Mr. Zach Wilson hits the news. Not for workouts he's participating in, but for girl drama and the rumor that he is sleeping with his mom's best friend. It, what say you guys? What, what, are, what are we going to see at a Zach Wilson? Who wants to go first? Who do you want us to go first, Stacey? All right, let's, let's hear from Roberto. I, I know what's coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's tough. You hand a young kid a whole bunch of money, and who knows what happens to their mindset. Maybe they think they're untouchable. Maybe they think, you know. The, the rules don't apply. I mean, it looked like he had a beautiful girl from the from already, you know, previously. So why mess that up, to say the least? But, you know, I, I don't know the entire story. Obviously, I've heard what happened, you know, from the, the <laughs> Internet. <laughs> but I love how we're dancing around what happened. He bagged his mom's best friend, folks. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, or allegedly. I mean, at that age, sometimes that's somebody's goal, you know, but I mean, that's when you're in the spotlight in a big city like New York, it's just going to be, that's going to create this little microscope for him. So I, I don't think it's the best move, obviously, you know, PR wise, not a good move. So it, it's just, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not condoning it by any way, but at the same time, it's, it's crazy and. I'm sure these things happen all the time. And I, I, I actually want to hear what Daniel has to say because I know he is uh, probably not the biggest Zach. Wilson. Well, and uh, MTO brings up a good point. Not only is he uh, playing on the word cougar, <laughs> but uh, this little situation is also going to affect that Washington commander team because one of the ladies uh, found her way to Mr. Milney. So, Scout Kelly, you're up. Well, I tell you what, I tell you what, we're going to start with the drink here because oh, we got to wind up. Oh, about the tradition, the Roberto. Drink, right? Okay, so so this is what we're going with tonight. Uh, we're going with uh, mango gem. Okay, we're going mango <laughs> gem. Hey, I, I went with some kind of like Doritos Mountain Dew the other week. It was terrible, but this is better, I think. Let me see. It was flaming hot Mountain Dew two yeah, weeks this ago. Is good. Okay, and, and it's a, why I'm, I'm pointing at this drink right now is because what I'm about to say is going to be a gem. Okay, so you want to turn okay. up the vibe a little bit. Because All right, I, Roberto, I, put on your seatbelt, man. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Here, here, here's, here, yeah, yeah. here's the thing. You put your tray tables up, your seats up, right? You know, it's uh, on the Jets, no pun intended. Of course, Zach Wilson's uncle owns JetBlue Airlines, the official airline of New York Jets, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but but here's the thing, okay? And, and I echo a lot of what, you know, what Roberto was saying there, um, you know, about the situation, about his life being put under a microscope and everything. And everybody's kind of looking at this. Listen, what I see happening is someone who's worked inside this building for four years with the New York Jets, is I see that Zach Wilson appears to me and his mother and the people involved, They Zach Wilson seems to be more interested and care more about being a celebrity than he cares about being the winning quarterback in the New York Jets. Listen, people are making the comparison, this guy being the next Broadway Joe. Are you kidding me? He's won three games in the National Football League. <laughs> Bill Par if Parcells would have been a coach when Zach Wilson was there and the two had collided in the hallway, I mean, this is a serious distraction. Bill Parcells used to tell everybody at the end of practice, stay out of the newspapers and don't go where you're not wanted. Don't be that distraction. Zach Wilson is becoming more and more that distraction. All off seasons, you you know, point out before we're watching videos of, you know, I mean, you know, I, I don't like Trey Lance, but you know, he's he's working out. You, you Justin Fields is working out with with uh, all these quarterbacks and everything with C.J. Stroud and you know Deshaun Watson and 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 all these guys are working. Justin Fields are working out together. All we see from Zach Wilson is he's at a baseball game, he's at a hockey game, he's he's over here, he's on a boat over there, he's he's dating this girl maybe he's dating that girl his, his mom's best you know we're seeing all these distractions and what my main concern i mean every piece of information is part of the evaluation process okay and that's what i learned i mean information gathering was the cornerstone of bill parcells and bill bilichek's operation Every piece of information is critically important. And what I see happening, and not a lot of people are talking about this. I sent out a tweet today. But what I see happening and in, in, in materializing here is what kind of effect will this have on Zach Wilson's psyche going forward? That That's the thing. Everyone, ah, ha, ha, fun and games, ah, ha. You know, even Mr. <laughs> John, Johnson, you know, he's tweeting Wolf Wolf, all this stuff. Okay. What's oh, going to happen? Did he really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, oh, somebody, no. somebody, somebody sent out a tweet today. That, okay. But, but here's the thing. And, 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 and MTO, Lance, what do you think of that, man? Jets Trey, guy. Trey Lance, Trey Lance is chiming in. <laughs> Kenny Pickett's chiming in. All these people are, you know, sauce guard. Everybody's chiming with the same. But here's the reality. Okay. Here's the reality of the situation. How will this affect Zach Wilson, who's already in a very tough situation? Like Bill Parcell says, anybody, you know, everybody wants a big job in New York until they get it, okay? But what's going to happen to this young man who is coming off being the third most sack quarterback in the NFL of 44 sacks? He's got two, he's got an offensive line that, that's that's shaking in front of him with two offensive tackles coming off knee, knee surgeries. What's going to happen this season to his psyche? Okay, when all of a sudden he's got these family problems, he's got he's, he's lost his best friend. I mean, really, he has with Dax Mill. Okay, oh, yeah, him. that's okay. ugly. Okay, his mom is involved, the family embarrassment, the mom and the best friend, all these components. How is this going to play in his mind? And I can tell you what, those linebackers in the NFL are going to cheat up to the line of scrimmage, and they're going to be jawing him. They're going to be jawing him. They're going to say, you know what? You, oh, you want, yeah. you know, you, this is going to be something. They're going to be in his head, in his, in his face, every single play until he proves he can win the National Football League. Oh, yeah. I mean, can you hear that? That's a very valid point. Uh, sound off on this, Roberto, if you've got a thought. But, uh, yeah, some of the bigger talkers in the league, and I, I, I'll even bring up a world champion uh, all-pro cornerback Jalen Ramsey who likes to slide into people's DMs prior to game. Can you imagine that conversation across the line of scrimmage? Hey, Zach, can I get your mom's number? I mean, there's going to be some – oh. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Taylor, Lord Taylor would have been John him. <laughs> I mean, what were you going to say, Roberto? No, she's a good-looking woman. But at the same time, what I was going to say to follow up on Daniel is, you know, actions have consequences. And, you know, that's that's something that might bite him later on. So, and, and that's a great point, Roberto, because here's the thing. Zach Wilson's entire reputation has changed over the last, you know, few days here. He's now known that, that he's, he's not known as a winning quarterback. He's not known for anything he's doing on the field. He's known for this. And that's, sure. you know, you're, we're talking about a 21, 22-year-old kid. I mean, that's a tough thing to to overcome like like it's it's all fun and games initially, but like you said, Roberto, you know, it, it's going to it's going to be a problem. I mean, it's going to really play in his mind. 
Yeah. Okay. So I, I want to pop off on this for a second. I, I'm going to be honest. And this is in Roberto is our, our guest this week. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, uh, this is Daniel and I often disagree, which is what's so darn fun about it. Um, I don't think this is a big deal. I mean, yeah, I think people are going to jaw at him. Um, MTO's comments are kind of interesting here. Um, where he's Zach Wilson is slowly becoming the uh, East version of Aaron Rodgers, where he's got a new beautiful girlfriend every other week. Uh, the difference is to MTO's point, eh, A Rod, another fan favorite of the scout, I might add. Uh, Roberto does have a Super Bowl ring, he's got a few MVP awards, he's done a few things. Okay, uh, but to MTO's point here, uh, and the scout was actually very verbose and open about this during the scouting process before last year's NFL draft uh, about Zach Wilson's mom and her desire for attention <laughs> that you can go back and watch past podcasts. So this is interesting. I, I think it's a nothing burger at the end of the day. Um, I'm a, not quite as down on Zach as the scout is. Roberto, what do you think out of Zach Wilson based on what you saw last year? I mean, watching him, it, you know, it looked like he had some growing pains. It looked like Elijah yeah. Moore was supposed to be a big target for him, and I think him getting hurt, hurt, um, like Daniel had mentioned, with, with the linemen going down, they didn't have much of a run game. That, there wasn't much around him to help, and that's kind of what one of the things I've told Daniel, not to be a homer, but to bring up Kenny Pickett. I think, you know, there's a lot of good pieces in place around him to make it more of a productive scenario or situation if you want to look at it that way where I think Zach Wilson was somewhat kind of set up to fail you know but there wasn't high expectations for the Jets last year let's be honest yeah yeah I mean you got although that I mean, running game the I thought, Ram, they weren't the LA Rams you know well no one is no one is yeah. Roberto nicely said <laughs> nicely yeah. stated I'm liking you more by the moment uh the <laughs> the scout loves his the Jets, I thought, stole the draft. I love their draft picks. So I expect for sure. bigger things out of the Jets. And I actually think something like this could be polarizing for Mr. Babyface Zach Wilson. Maybe this makes him realize, hey, it's time to toughen up. Yeah. It's uh, it's a big world out there. Maybe Here's my question. Up. Yeah, an MTO comment on this as you watch and listen as well. Um, is this a case of where we should – maybe the maybe the three of us here on the Dirty Pocket should find a way to introduce – Zach Wilson's mom to Patrick Mahomes' brother. Maybe they could. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe they could just do this whole NFL distraction thing for these two quarterbacks, and they just go off and do TikToks, and it's uh, yeah, it's all this kind of stuff. I don't know, man. I yeah, you know, Stacy. I mean, I thought the story was bizarre enough, and and you came at me about Charlotte Weiss and Bill Parcells and how they met, but the, the matchmaking skills that you're presenting on the show tonight are are, are bizarre. Say I think it's Roberto. I think it's Roberto. <laughs> um, we've never had this dynamic before. Um, hey, it's a bring... three-man booth. It, it changes the dynamics for sure. That's Three's right. Crowd, That's right. right. <laughs> yeah. Can't have enough people here uh, talking football. Well, okay. That was kind of the biggest news in sports. I will say, just as we close this out and get into something we want to talk about this week, it has definitely, to MTO's point, been a bad week for Jet QBs. <laughs> it's... Uh, Sam Darnold and the Baker Mayfield. Maybe we should tackle that here just for a minute. Geno Smith, I think, will win that job in Seattle, which is not going to go well. Um, but, okay, Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield, and the coach is saying open competition. What do we think, gentlemen? Uh, what do that, you think, Roberto? Yeah, I, I, any I thoughts think, on this? Well, again, Watching Baker last year, a couple games, playing against the Steelers. I mean, the kid was hurt, let's be honest. I mean, do I think yeah. Baker Mayfield is the next coming? No, I don't think he is. But at the same time, when a kid has a torn labrum, he is, you know, I think his knee, there was injuries there. I mean, we don't know exactly what was really wrong with him. So I think getting him the way they got him, they stole him, you know? I mean, you get the number oh, one overall yeah. pick. Yeah. So – do I think Baker Mayfield is going to come in there and just light it up all of a sudden? Probably not. But I think you're getting a kid that's hungry. You know, he's wanting to prove Cleveland wrong, that they made a bad decision. And, and again, if a kid's healthy, I mean, Baker can sling it around the field a little bit. Matt Rule has a creative offense. It might it might work out. I, I think with him and Darnold, I, I saw a stat that they're the first team since 
what the I, I think since the 1977 Houston Oilers to have the number one and three overall pick on the same team within a you know within or I'm sorry it was I love this pulling that at it it was you know, Oakland Bland, yeah Oakland uh, Raiders they had the number one and number three overall picks on their team wow wow I didn't at know one that. time like that so it's pretty wild um, right but I mean way, you've got it you is remember wild. when. Yeah, you remember when college football was tanking for Sam Darnold? Just like they were tanking for Trevor Lawrence. They were tanking for Andrew Luck. Um, sure. And Baker, they, I don't think they really ever said that about Baker. I think that was kind of a weaker draft that he ended up number one. But uh, I'll let the scout talk here. I think Baker Mayfield's got more to offer than people give him credit for. And he, was, he played through big-time injuries last year. And he got the Browns back to the playoffs. It's just bizarre to me. Although the scout loves himself some Deshaun Watson, so he, he really does. There I go <laughs> talking about myself in the third person, but but like Herschel Walker, but uh, you know it, it's something where you know I, I feel that um, you know the name that we're forgetting here is, is Matt Corral, um, yeah. is, is, you know, and that and that's and that's my guy. That's a guy that that was that was my my you know QB two coming out of the draft this year. So uh, I think that that's going to factor in too. I, I, I don't think that quarterback is the main problem with the Carolina Panthers as much as everyone likes to draw it up to be that way. I think there's other issues there as well. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see who ends up, you know, I, I, I don't know if they're all going to end up on the roster opening day. I, I don't know. You know, there's some talk that maybe now Darnold, you know, there was some discussion about maybe Darnold goes to the Detroit Lions or something, you know, so I, I just, wow. I, that's going to be a really crowded quarterback room to have that kind of experience and to say, now, is it, is it needed in the NFL? Sure. I mean, the board, you know, I mean, obviously sometimes it takes two, maybe three, you know, quarterbacks to win, but you know, will it happen that way? I, I don't know if Darnold's going to be there on opening day, to be honest with you guys. Yeah. Very interesting. You think there may be a chance so they move him? Yeah. That cat's not out of the realm of, of, uh, possibility. Uh, there's some people who think there's going to be some movement in San Francisco too. Uh, never mind. Let's move on to. Uh, <laughs> See, that's what no, I'm talking about. You tee it up. Agreed with MTO here. I do think Matt Rule's in a little bit of trouble. I think he's got too much talent on that roster to be just turning in like the performance that happened last year. So that's very interesting. I do think that Baker Mayfield will win that job. Roberto, you think he wins that job? I do, and and I think you make an interesting point about Darnold maybe being gone because let's be honest, is Seattle gonna really run with Drew Locke all season? Come on, you know, <sighs> right? Man. Right. Good point. So, oh man, or Geno Smith? Ugh. Yeah, I mean, or and then again, if Jimmy G gets traded, yeah, that's an upgrade. But I mean, you know, I, you got to make a move somewhere. There's a lot of nice QBs coming out next year, but we will get to that. So yeah, go on. I don't want to. I don't want to cannibalize anything. Yeah, maybe we should uh, just get your gentleman's opinion just briefly as uh, as I look at the NFC West and the uh, quarterback situation out there. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks seem to have uh, a bit of dysfunction going on there. Uh, the Cardinals seem to have a Kyler Murray situation. I don't know what's going on there. And maybe you've heard of the San Francisco 49er quarterback situation uh, with Jimmy G. And looks like I'm going to enjoy this next season uh from a divisional perspective so i'm pretty excited about that um but i will tell you before we move on and tackle some of the incoming talent since we have him here scout mm -hmm. uh roberto must hear from you as a pittsburgh native and a guy living there in the hometown of world champion aaron donald of the los angeles rams kenny pickett sure. Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph. What's the word on the streets in the pit? Well, it's funny <laughs> you say that because speaking to a lot of people, which, you know, I, I obviously like to do and get people's opinions, pick their brain. Everybody thinks Mitch is going to beat out Kenny Pickett in Pittsburgh. It Ooh. seems like. I, on the other hand, am kind of the opposite. I think Kenny is going to beat out Mitch in training camp. And I think it, because here's the other thing. You let Mitch, let's say Mitch wins the job. Sure, I hope he, whoever, let the best man win is my opinion. However, I think Kenny is going to outplay him come training camp, come preseason. But in Pittsburgh, everybody loves the hometown type kid. So as soon as Mitch Trubisky throws that first interception, 
you're going to have a bunch of yinzers screaming, put in Kenny, you know, and, and it's <laughs> just, just how they are, you know, I know. It. So I just think in terms of like the short leash, let Kenny have the short leash. He's the rookie. You know, if he starts to struggle, you bring in Mitch to help him and, you know, alleviate him or let maybe I don't want to see any of them get hurt, but it's like, you know, it happens in the NFL injuries happen. And I also see Mason Rudolph being traded. Do I know where he's going to go? No, we got to wait for, I think you got to wait for an injury to happen in maybe training camp or preseason. And then maybe someone, you know, signs Mason Rudolph or trades for him. Let's call it a six round pick, you know, to yeah. just give them some depth. Cause let's, I don't see Mason Rudolph being much of a factor. Okay. Okay. Straight from the Pittsburgh native. Very, very interesting. <laughs> uh, like that you're high on picket. The scout and I are not. Uh, yeah. have to be candid, but that's what makes this a dirty oh, pocket. Fair. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, you know, you bring up a good point about people screaming for a guy's head. Um, I, I want to give the floor to the scout here for a minute because sure. if Carson Wentz, if Carson Wentz starts to poop the bed, Sure. In Washington, how quick is Taylor Heineke going to be in that pocket? Very quickly. Boom. Very, very quickly. <laughs> Absolutely. Because here's the thing, okay? Ron Rivera has been extremely underwhelming at this point as far as his, his, his coach. He, he, can't, he can't afford to play around with this for another season or two. He's going to have to go with the person who he doesn't want to go with, but he's going to need to go with, and that's Taylor Heineke. Um, Sam Howell, that, that, he's a joke. I mean, he, he's a punchline from 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 a comedy club. Okay, it, 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 it put, it put, it put it bluntly. Okay, <laughs> the guy guy is an absolute bust. I, I, I'm more excited watching paint dry than I'm watching Sam Sam Howell back in the pocket. Okay, okay, it, it, it's it's it's. But, That's how you really feel. No. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's very <laughs> shy. Very shy. I am very shy. I, I really am. I, I tagged uh, uh, Mr. York tonight in one of my, my tweets. I am pretty shy. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, it, it's, it's you know, I think Taylor Heineke, I mean, that, see, here's the thing, okay, in Washington really briefly, okay, and I have an affinity for this team because this is a team I grew up with, okay, everybody wanted to play pin the tail on the donkey and they wanted to try to highlight Taylor Heineke as being the problem out there. Okay. Taylor Heineke was not the problem. Turn up your volume, Jack Del Rio. You are the problem with that defense. Your defense floored from number four down to number 25 or whatever it was in the league. Chase Young looked like a bust. You couldn't get anybody to the quarterback. That's the problem. The defense tanked in Washington. It wasn't Taylor Heineke. It was a wasted motion and wasted money to go get Carson Wentz in there because he is not – the quarterback was never the problem. That was never the big issue out there. And they 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 mis, misjudged it. And I think ultimately it's going to cost somebody dearly out there. But I, I don't know what's going to happen with Wentz. I mean, but uh, yeah, Heineke's definitely he's he's lurking. Okay, okay. I, I got to ask you. Uh, MTO brings up a good point. Del Rio seems more interested in politics than he does football at the moment. So, <laughs> but hey, Terry Keep McLaurin, it separate, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, come on, man. Just shut up and coach the defense. I mean, that sure. defense tanked so bad last year. It was awful. Um, it was it was unbelievable to watch. All those number one picks just poop the bed. It, I I had him as the number one defense, and boy, was I wrong. Uh, Terry McLaurin resigning. How oh, great yeah, is this? Terry. Oh yeah, Terry, Terry yeah. deserves the what money. a player. Yeah, yeah. What player. a player, great, man. Great player. He's starting to look like one of those guys like the Calvin Johnsons, the Dan Marino. They get they stay on one team their whole career, and they're really good, and the rest of the league knows it. We actually have a guy like that on the world champion Los Angeles Rams, Matthew Stafford. Who He, he just got that. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. But, he, but prior to that, his career, it's like the whole league knows he's special, just like Terry McLaurin. And it's like, God, can they put something around him? Like – uh, it's, I think it's one of the best signings I've seen the commanders. Uh, yeah. MTO is absolutely, that is a, that is a nasty receiving room. Uh, you couldn't agree more. Those. Well, it's nasty. It's yeah. nasty. If Curtis Samuel get plays to plays the game and doesn't get injured all the time. But right. Ahead, well, what you say? I was just going to say in, in terms of your Rams, the, the, the player that we could call would be Cooper cup would be maybe oh. the one that they hold on to as a, you know, great I, I value agree. pick that, isn't going to probably go anywhere because he seems seems yep. like a good dude that's going to stick yep. around. So he's great, a ram for life. 
Yeah, he should be. great point. He'll be in the front yeah. office afterwards. But I'll tell you what, uh, this makes me think, to MTO's point and your guys' point, uh, the scout had mocked the top tight end to the commanders in the draft, and they didn't do it. Boy, what did that – tell you what, Scout Kelly, GM of the future, that would have been a nice – Nice set of tools for Carson Wentz, man. He de definitely doesn't have any excuses. He's got Gibson, too, in the backfield. So, all right. There, we got in some commander talk. We got in some Steelers talk. And we got in some world champion Los Angeles Rams talk. Let's talk about the future of the NFL. And I want to pick your guys' brains, both guys that are aspiring to be scouts and front office guys in the National Football League. I am taking a look at these quarterbacks on the college landscape, and I've got some favorites. I don't crunch as much film as you two may, but I wanted to start to get your opinion in the much, much, much too early NFL draft talk because it's just that time of year between now and training camp. <laughs> as you look for, I mean, this is our last month without football, guys. I mean, this is it. So next month we got college starting up. As you look at the landscape with these college quarterbacks, and it, some of these answers are probably obvious, but let's let's unpack who you two think are the top three quarterbacks to be watching in college football this year, and maybe start with your third, and let's work up to your first. Daniel, so you want to take this one? Yeah, no, I, I definitely. Yeah, I can. And I, I can add in. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So you you want me to talk, Stacy? Each all of you, three yeah. Of each of you, give me number three. Daniel will go, and then Roberto will go. Okay. I'll say I'll say if I think that uh, what I what I may know about it. Okay, uh, my QB three at this point. I mean, I've looked at about seven or eight of these guys uh, for SI Jets at this point, I, and my QB three right now is Tanner McKee um, out of Stanford, uh, a wow. big kid. Oh, absolutely, six six, two twenty eight. Uh, you yeah. know, he's he's a guy. He's a big, strong arm kid. Um, just phenomenal. He, he's got great poise in the pocket. He just he stands in there. He'll stare down the barrel of, of the pass rush. It doesn't phase him. And the thing about Tanner McKee, the thing about him that impresses me the most is the ball placement in the short to intermediate levels of the field. This guy is pinpoint. We haven't seen anything like this in the last couple of drafts since Mac Jones came out of Alabama, did the same things there, put the ball right on the money. And what's and, and, and I want to touch on this for a moment. It's so vitally important, the ball placement. I'm not talking about accuracy, I mean, about a completion percentage. I'm talking about ball placement. You can complete passes with receivers who make crazy acrobatic catches, jump up and down the air, slide to the ground. That, that That's a complete pass. I'm talking about putting the ball on the fingertips so the receiver can just run right through it in stride and get that yakety yak yards after the catch and just keep on going. And that is Tanner Bikki. When I look at him, I see some. He wears number 18. I see some of that Payne Manning in him. I see that poise. He is very mature in the pocket, and he's somebody that, that he stands tall, and, and, and I, I like him a lot. I mean, plus the kid's a cancer survivor from the time he was 16 years old. Wow. He's wow. been through some life. He's been through some things. I, 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 I really like the kid. Wow. Okay. Um, Roberto. Oh, yeah, so to – Tough one to top, but at the same time, watching him, I did see some of that that he, that Daniel was speaking about, like that pinpoint placement. Um, I saw him play against the Washington Huskies, and it looked like nobody wanted to throw to those corners to Kyler Gordon and to McDuffie. <laughs> yeah. So he, I watched that he he was play the the placement was there. That really did catch my eye in terms of you know utilizing the tight ends, kind of getting away from those guys. I did see him test the the corners a couple times, and he made some great throws. And you know, the receivers sometimes drop the ball. That happens, but the ball was there. No, no turnover happened from it. So, I agree with Daniel. I liked him. I, it it definitely caught my eye for sure. Okay, okay, you got him as your as your number three as well. You think he's right um, there? Or did you have somebody I, else? I would would probably you know probably go. One, two, three would probably be Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud. And that number three spot can always be, you know, maneuverable. Um, I know there's another guy that we also like, but the Tanner McKee one, I'm going to definitely watch a lot more yeah. in depth. This okay. Year, just because it's going to, you know, it's nice to hear of somebody this early in the season to kind of keep an eye on. So, 
that but watching him you know via youtube it was definitely a a good he caught my eye for sure i i gotta go watch some of that film i have to confess i have not watched tanner mckee excellent choice scout as his number three quarterback let's jump into number two and i you know i felt like good grief these two uh, these first two picks are going to be pretty slant. It depends. Maybe you guys differ and you swap spots with them or something, but it's I, it's got to be the same two guys, in my opinion. By the way, I want to say in my number three, I, I was kind of watching some stuff on Clayton Toon in Houston. Looked like a kid that was a player. He's got a really good high school career, too. Went to the Manning Passing Camp, Manning passing camp and on, won a bunch of awards. So I was kind of watching him. him. I'm going to have my eyeball on that kid. Uh, this next season, but let's let's go into number two, Scout. Since you started off, who's your number two? I'm going to be very shocked if it's not one of two names. Okay, well, prepare to be shocked then, because of you're course. always <laughs> here. We go. That's, here that's we go, John. I I tell you what, if it's Trey Lance, North Dakota State, uh, we're the episode's <laughs> over. No, no, and it's not that kid from BYU <laughs> that they're, they're talking about. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, but uh, my number two QB two on my board is Spencer Rattler. Uh, from from South Carolina, okay. 6'1", 200 pounds. I mean, I looked at him on game film against Oklahoma, West Virginia, Texas. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, West Virginia, Texas, Kansas State, Nebraska. Uh, the NFL comp I have on him is kind of a cross between Patrick Mahomes and Brett Favre. Uh, he, he's a guy that is is um, it, it, I, there's a lot I just love about him. To me, he has super. He's a superstar in the making. He's a guy that I, I mean, when I watch film. It, it, it's when I find myself saying, wow, or damn, you know, I'm sitting there watching a the film. I'm like, those guys really stand out to me. This guy is athletic. He's confident. He's ultra competitive. He can move around. He can slide around, plays with a real edge, has ice in his eyes. He's extremely competitive. He has a lot of fire in him. He wants to win. I mean, that's pretty apparent. He brings a nice high tempo energy to the, to the, to the field, which is important from a rhythm standpoint on your offense. Crisp set up in the pocket, well-schooled mechanics, good ball handling. Um, I'm going off some notes here. I don't have a, like a teleprompter in front of me. I'm not big, big time enough yet. Uh, <laughs> big but, budget uh, items. Big, big budget big items. Budget. Yeah, it's, it's it's a notebook from CVS. Okay, uh, but uh, you know, but I also don't have him by my ear right now, feeding this information to me like all the you know the big timers do. Uh, but you know, he's he's delivered decisive movements, capable of making quick decisions. He can deliver under pressure, outstanding in a short to intermediate route level. I really like that about him a lot. Uh, he, he's somebody that works the perimeters well and plays, like I said, like football is important to him. He can throw on the move. Um, you know, the big downfall about Rattler to me is almost like the Brett Favre curse. It's kind of like he's got such a strong arm that he kind of like, like it's, it's a blessing and a curse because sometimes he'll take some unnecessary chances with the ball or think maybe I can fit into a window that's not open. Uh, but outside of that, uh, I really, really like Spencer Rattler. I mean, it, 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 he's going to be – I mean, if I'm a GM of a team, I mean, I just I just tweeted the other day and I, I, I said, you know, to, to um, uh, the Jets owner, Woody Johnson, I tagged Mr. Johnson. I said, this is the quarterback you need to be looking at at this point on your staff. And I can't afford to be wrong with this stuff because, I mean, this it's, it's like, you know, once you put it out there, it's, it's there forever. And by screenshots and saves the receipts and, you know, all that kind of jazz. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's you guys. I mean, and, I mean, this is the second year in a row, guys, that I've walked away from watching Spencer Rattler. I also looked at him in 2020 against Oklahoma State, Iowa State, and in, in, in Florida, the Cotton Bowl. This is the second year in a row I've walked away from Spencer Rattler saying this is a franchise quarterback that I am interested in. Wow, man. I, got, I mean, I don't dislike Spencer Rattler. I don't want to say that at all, but – in the in the film work I've seen, and I thought MTO brought up a good point too that the he's a transfer. Obviously, he hit the portal, but uh, you know when I look at him, I see and this isn't a bad thing, but I see like a Tyrod Taylor, a Jake Plummer, you know, athletic, some mobility, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's what say you, Roberto, at number um, two, and and what do you think about the scout on Rattler? Well, no, I, I, Daniel makes good points. I'm never going to doubt that. However, I watched. I watched three games of Spencer Rattler. Um, I saw him play Oklahoma State. I watched him play Kansas State, and I watched him play in the bowl game against Florida. So that was the one I really kept my eye on. Um, this was in 2020 as well, just because I didn't want to have the 2021 tape whenever, you know, the whole 
when uh, the the kid that came in to take his job, you know, came in to do his. I, I felt like watching twenty twenty was where I got it. Um, I felt like the bowl game. He really played a hell of a game. I mean, he was all over the place in terms of great throws, good play action, good running. Um, he did a lot there. The the Kansas State game kind of scared me. I noticed that at the end yeah. of that game, they they blew it. And they, you know, the last, I think it was 35 or 38, 35. And, and Rattler did, you know, turn the ball over. So it was just something that I check Mark that you got to see that in situational football, you know, um, Oklahoma state though, I thought he played awesome. So it's, you got to, and I like watching rivalry games. I think there's always a lot of good, good juice juices flowing in those type of games. So I think Rattler has a lot of tools that can translate to the NFL. I did notice his arm strength. I noticed, you know, just ball placement, things of that nature. Um, because everybody, let's be honest, once they get to the NFL, everybody's the best. So you got to, <laughs> you doing this in the Big 12 might not translate over to the NFL. You know, let's, you know, when you see over unders in the Big 12 at 78 points, you know, they're not playing too much defense. So, sorry, Daniel. No, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, hey, it's okay. They're playing more defense than they play up in the um, in DSU, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, oh. So who do you? So, yeah. But that's not that, that. That's just a Trey Lance comment in general. But that's go. You know, go on. I'm listening. Uh, no there. I, uh, I was going to say the pocket's getting dirty here. This, this is a new dynamic for us. So who do you got at number two? Minutes in, we're going. Yeah, yeah. I I, I would put CJ Stroud at number two, and I think. Oh. But again, number two. I I, I want to see. I think CJ Stroud is going to. I want to see how he does this year. Just like I want to see how Spencer Rattler does with the transfer. This could be huge for him. He could really. If he takes South Carolina, you know, and creates them into a, a big time program again, that could be big for his draft stock. And just like CJ Trout, he could struggle this year, losing Alave, losing Garrett Wilson. Those aren't easy play. I mean, yeah, he has Marvin Harrison Jr., but Chris Alave, I think, is a stud. So I think missing out on him ooh, is going to. The scout loves him. <laughs> oh, I mean, how could you not? I mean, I'm going to love to have a you two on. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, like I like, like I tell Roberto and, and told you, Stacy, it's not about being right; it's about getting right. So I'm all ears. <laughs> well, no, I think I think I think CJ Stroud's going to miss a lave, and I watched CJ Stroud a little bit too, and and there were times one of the knocks on him that I saw. I think he I think he kind of floats the ball a little too much. I almost think it's a little bit. He doesn't have like that. It's almost. I don't want to say it's too precise. It almost looks like it'll get intercepted. So. It's just he might need to put a little bit more velocity on the throw. That's funny. I like C.J. Stroud from what I've seen. I, it, and I want to underline this. I like him for college football. Yes. And unfortunately for me, I'm always sitting back going, will he be a good pro football player? Exactly. And that's the part where I, you know, I'm not sure. I think he needs to have a big year. I do sure. think he's – he was actually, in all uh, fairness, he was my number one quarterback. I still think C.J. Stroud's okay. a class of college football, but I, but I do, I get really nervous with the Ohio State thing with quarterbacks. I mean, how I many agree. do we have to see? Um, and I do think he's an athlete. I mean, we could just go down the right Terrell Pryor and Braxton. I mean, we we just sit here for half an hour naming off Ohio State quarterbacks that yeah. just never panned out at the, at the at the next level. So. Okay, so number two, C.J. Stroud. We've got a dark horse from the scout in Rattler. Um, I, too, those Ohio State receivers. I, before we get to number one, real quick for MTO, uh, he really likes Caleb Williams. I don't know what there isn't to like after watching him in limited time last year. I thought, well, this kid's a stud. Sure. <laughs> and now, of course, he's going to play on the West Coast here at USC. So... Uh, very he interesting up, point. He gets uh, yeah. Kenny Pickett. He gets Kenny Pickett's number one target too, and Jordan Addison. So that may help yeah. things. It's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. So, yeah. So he's going to have Addison out there. This very interesting. New, this this portal thing. Exactly. It's new. It's so it's bizarre. That's why it's like I don't even want to put somebody number one yet because I'd be I'd be flipping a coin. You know, I, I think yeah. Bryce Young is a system. 
he's part of the Alabama system. Some of them don't translate over, you know? And it's, Ooh, it's interesting. I, I want to see what Tua does this year in the NFL because I think he has a lot of pressure on him. If You we can't do well with Tua. Tyreek, you know? It's, yeah. there's, there's a lot of heat on some of these guys. I mean, yep. I would yep. have taken Justin Herbert. Imagine if the Dolphins have Justin Herbert right now. It's They'd the Justin scared. Herbert. Yeah, Justin Herbert is the only player that I can point to in my entire lifetime where I went. I was 100% right. Everyone laughed at me, and I nailed it, nailed it, Good nailed it. And But he's the only one. I've had a lot, way more misses. <laughs> but I looked at Justin Herbert, and I went, special. Going to be better in the NFL than at Oregon. Going exactly. to light the league up. He is better than everyone even realized, and he is. He's unbelievable. Yep. Yeah. Smart so, kid too. You know, okay, we got to get into number one. Number one for you guys. Uh, bold prediction there from MTO. Stroud better than Justin Fields. Yeah, there's another one. Justin Fields. I mean, whole episode. Um, let's QB look at one, our, my QB one from 2021. Yeah. Justin yep. Fields, yeah, yeah. Scout had him as the guy coming out of that draft, followed by Mac Jones. Uh, not on the scouts list with some guy in San Francisco. Okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> No, we don't. We're trying not to say the name. <laughs> but, I, but I do like Brock Purdy. But go ahead, Stacey. <laughs> well done. Well that kid, done. That kid can play. Oh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, I, I, Trey Lance might have a real battle on his hands more, more, more than he bargains for because yeah. Purdy's coming up the ranks too behind him. And Purdy's a perfect quarterback for Kyle Shanahan's system that does runs and short passes 71% of the time. That, that, that plays perfectly into who Brock Purdy is. I'll tell you, and Spencer Rattler could be there too, Daniel. You never know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll reserve. I'll bite my tongue on that. I don't know. By, by the way, one thing, Stacy. One thing you talk about, Justin Herbert. This year's Justin Herbert. I just did a show on this morning. It is Grayson McCall, the kid, the Coastal Carolina kid. He is a poor man's Justin Herbert. You'll like him. Matter of fact, I even said the Rams should probably look at him in, in the second round of the upcoming draft because he is he'd be perfect for your system and for your team. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I tell you what. When I watch the 49ers, and we we try to stay away from this because the scout can get pretty upset, but. Um, I got to believe Kyle Shanahan goes out in his backyard sometimes in the dark and little tears run down his face every t and, and you look down and he's on an Apple iPad and he's watching highlights of Mac Jones and he's going, what happened to me that day? <laughs> Cause I just think that I, the scout, I fully agree. I think Trey Lance is going to bust and I think it's not going to be pretty in San Francisco. We'll leave it at that. Okay. And they get and they gave up a lot for that. You know, that's oh, way too much. Gosh. It's absurd. And that it's absurd. And again, not to be a Homer Yenzer Steeler fan, but we didn't give up anything to draft Kenny Pickett. He fell to well, So I yeah. feel like that's yeah, there's a reason for that. A, <laughs> <laughs> it, well, you know, you uh, blink blink Gabbert's still out there too, but you know what? <laughs> Rick, Roberto's getting before. baptized by fire on this show. He's I, 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 I would, I, I would have given up the, I would have given up the fifth or seventh round draft pick for Kenny Pickett. So I'm okay. <laughs> God, this is gonna be fun. Over. This is fun. Over. You know that. I love you. Man. I can come back and maybe next season, and we'll, you yeah. know, be like, come on now. What do you think now? No, it's we're okay. cut, and and you should, you should save up every vindictive vendetta you possibly can for this show because See, that's what it's all about. <laughs> I've had my incorrect picks too, so it's all good. Hey, this this is a guy, but but you've been right too. I know that for a fact too. You know, so so, but no, this is this is what a kind of banter. It's the kind of thing I want in the war room someday. Everybody just having a good time talking football. You know, as long as everybody watches the film, I'm cool. <laughs> that, yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, MTO's got a great comment for Roberto. I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight that in a minute. But before we do that, let's talk about your number ones. College quarterback, uh, the, the scout has definitely thrown me with Rattler right in there. Uh, Roberto, you threw me too with C.J. Stroud at two. So give me your number ones, guys. Okay. Um, I'm going to come back, um, and uh, my number one is C.J. Stroud. And uh, to me, um, this is the first time for my SI Jets article. It's the first time in my life I've ever used the term generational talent. 
uh, in an article, and I'm putting that label on C.J. Stroud. He is going to he's going to break that Ohio State, uh, you know, that saying that, that quarterbacks can't mm-hmm. come out of there. This guy is a human jugs machine. Okay, mm-hmm. when I watched him, agrees. I watched him against Oregon, Michigan State, and Penn State. You know, holding accountable to the game film. This is a guy sure. is 6'3", 215 pounds. This guy is if I had to put an NFL comp on him, an NFL comparable, it's Warren Moon. Okay, that's Whoa. what that's what we're looking at here. In my opinion, this is a pure pocket passer, big, thick frame kid. Shows maturity that's beyond his years in the pocket. What do I mean by that? Okay, what I mean is we see NFL veteran quarterbacks that can do this, where 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 you can see CJ Stroud, you can see his head kind of turn one way. He'll look off a defender and he'll come back over the top with the thing. It, it, college quarterbacks can't do that a lot of times. This guy is is. is He's 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 just has everything you want. He's even tempered and consistent. I like that too. He doesn't get too high and too low. Sure. He's deliberate and decisive in the pocket. Makes quick decisions. He's he's a, a, a phrase that I've coined in scouting is he's downfield minded. This guy is always driving the team down the field, which I like a lot about him too. Uh, he's got great field awareness. I feel he's smart. He's alert. Uh, he, he's he's just he has everything that I that, that you know it's it, it's would, would I take him or Rattler? Um, for me personally, I would take Rattler probably if I was in a war room running a draft at this point because Rattler resonates better with me than Stroud. Stroud feels a little too mechanical, robotic at times. However. Wow. However, however, because so Rattler's the type of guy you can win a championship with. The guy he's going to lay it all on the field. He's going to leave it there. You know these other guys that can throw the drills and do that. You know, but 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 Stroud not taking anything away from Stroud. I need to see what Rattler does this year at South Carolina before I make my final put my board out there. But Stroud has got everything you would want in a quarterback. When I look at him out back there, the only the only downside on on, on um, Stroud that I saw is is he, he is sometimes I mean he, most of his throws go to the middle or to the right side of the yep. field. He struggles. You saw that right. Good struggles go to the left side of the field, and sometimes he aims it. I feel a little too much. You know, it doesn't really. You know, it, it's it feels a little too again a little Soft too mechanical. Yeah, yeah. There's some he's aiming it. He's trying. He's it's not the placement's too high in those situations. Situation, and he's too inconsistent deep for my taste personally. Um, and uh, he needs to work on timing routes. I mean, like all the college quarterbacks do. I mean, in, in college, you can get away with just throwing the ball whenever the guys are wide open, they're running free. You, you can't make a living doing that in the National Football League. That's something Tanner McKee is going to have to work on and clean up too before he gets to the NFL level. But, um, you know, I really, I really like C.J. Stroud a lot. And to me, he's the class of the NFL draft. Uh, at this at this point, but a lot, a lot can change, of course, because that's why sure. they play the games. And I, I respect what you're saying, Roberto. It's kind of risky even put numbers out there or put put a board out there. But uh, hey, everybody else in the world has a board out there, so I figured I'd join the party too and For put sure. some thoughts out there. You know, but but no, I I, I like C.J. Stroud a lot. This is the way too early board. It's totally okay. No one's going to hold us to it in from. In oh, they'll hold me to it. They'll yeah. hold me to it. Well, they will you. Yeah, yeah, but you know, they may they may hold a party if it's just not a tweet about Trey Lance. They'll be like, "Oh God, he's talking about another different quarterback." Yeah. Yeah, That's me. awesome. They'll, they'll, they'll definitely re- remind me. Oh yeah. So Roberto, number one, who you got? Uh, I mean, again, it's it's still very early to sit there and uh, sure know, tell me a, tell you an exact person that I think is number one, but. Watching C.J. Stroud, he's a he's a heck of a player. You watch Bryce Young last year; he was a good, you know. So I I, I can't sit here and say this guy is the number one QB right now. So I would be, you know, it'd be too early for me right now to say that. And I'm and I'm sorry if that's not what you want to hear, but I don't want to sit there. Yeah. I liked I liked watching Rattler. I liked watching C.J. Stroud. I liked watching, you know, the McKee kid. I thought he definitely had some upside, and I and I you know. Like, like Daniel said, the number 18, it caught my eye too. But And it was nice to see him against Washington. I like when these guys have to play against NFL talents after you see them get drafted because you see kind of where the game plan goes away from those particular players. And I felt like they didn't want to get beat by the McDuffies or the Kyler Gordons. And, and, I, and I think Kansas City got a great pick by getting the McDuffie because, you know, they, they're going to need some help on defense. So, yeah, good corner, um, good corner. So – to say number one, I, 
CJ Stroud is really good. And I know we talked about him as the number two. I, I just can't sit here and give you an exact number one. Maybe in you know, okay. 12 weeks, That's fair. 12 weeks, I think I could, I could definitely give yeah. you, you know, and, and I don't want to sit here and I don't want to throw smoke by any means. So, and, and Daniel obviously has great analysis on, on these guys. So I, Stroud is nice. He spent I think some he's time. Gonna, I think he's going to miss. I think he's going to miss a lave though. I do. Okay. Okay. All right. Very interesting, gentlemen. I uh, I thought I'd hear a lot more about Bryce Young. I do, in my opinion, watch you. Bryce Young was amazing. He did an incredible job in college. Um, and to me, he does seem to fit that mold of your Alabama quarterback, you know, the A.J. Sure. McCarrens. Although Mac Jones is going to be special, and Tua, I think, will come on this year. Scout. And, and, and the side. Oh, go ahead. No, no. Where are you going to say, Roberto? I was just going to say Bryce Young, I think the only thing you could really knock on him is the 5'11". You know, he's not your prototypical. He's not yeah. the McKee kid from Stanford who's 6'5". Nice. But I don't think this, uh, you know, I, I think you could be a 5'11 QB. Look at Drew Brees. I mean, he played forever. So, but go ahead, Daniel. No, I was going to say Bryce Young at this point, I have slated as a CFL prospect. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, see, interestingly enough, I don't disagree with you there. I, yeah. I just don't think... Again, it's just such a job. I, I I made the big my big comment about Justin Herbert. I watched him in college and went, "Oh, oh, you you guys like him now? He's he's an NFL quarterback." Mm -hmm. Like just watching him, the way he navigated the. I saw him live. He's right here in Oregon. Grew up a few miles. You know, I said he's very very special. He'll be better yeah. at that level than he was in college. But when I look at somebody like a Bryce Young, I go, "Yeah, tough kid gets it John, Not an NFL guy college. or a career backup." Yeah, yeah, so very interesting, gentlemen. Very nice uh, snapshot in the much too early who's our top three quarterback conversation. And, Roberto, uh, we completely baptized you in fire in your first guest appearance. Well done. Uh, well done. Well done. Uh, as is that, tradition. In, yeah, very nice job. We will definitely be doing more of this. Um, as we typically do to close out the show with just a couple minutes left, we like to do parting shots. Um, we actually didn't do our tradition at the beginning about our drinks, kind of, the scout did, but I, I personally think he's still in his, his colon and intestines are still in recovery <laughs> from the flaming Mountain Dew he had a couple yeah. weeks ago. Uh, I've been worried about him, but uh, one of our traditions is parting shots every week, and uh, we'll give you kind of an idea of ours. Scout, do you have any parting shots as we close out and get ready for next week? I do. I think we're starting to see uh, with the with the New York Jets. Uh, I think we're starting to see uh, the, you know the old saying where there's smoke, there's fire, and, and this whole situation with uh, Big Bust, as he's affectionately Thank calls you. himself, uh, Mikai Becton. Um, you know, I, I feel like like you know there's rumors that he might be coming down to your neck of the woods. Um, you know, with the Steelers, there's some rumor there from Bleacher Report. Uh, there's some talk about you know, and now all of a sudden there's more talk about Orlando. Brown too with the Kansas City Chiefs and he has not come to terms with his extension they have to a Friday deadline I think there's a possibility matter of fact I'm going to write about this on Sunday for Jets SI is that if he doesn't sign the extension by Friday I would write about it I think there's a chance that we may see the New York Jets make a play for Orlando Brown um, and then also deal uh, back to either the Steelers or the uh, Chiefs as a result I just don't think there's a future for Becton in New York. I, I think things have gone too far with him. And I just don't see it. And he was Interesting. the ninth overall pick, I think, out of Louisville. He was a high – he was a top ten pick from Louisville, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah. 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 And yeah. He hasn't been able to stay on the field, hasn't been able to control his weight. and. Yeah, know, he's he wearing that T-shirt, I'm a bust or something now. He's, yeah, he, he, a big bust, he's he reading the press. Yeah. yeah. NFL, yeah. not for long, right? That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Any um, parting shots or thoughts, Roberto? Just par parting shot or thought I will give whenever I said earlier that they're the, the Carolina Panthers were the first team to have the one and three. I did have to look this up just to be correct. So in 1980, the Houston Oilers traded for Pastorini or traded Pastorini to the Raiders for Kenny Stabler, and they had um, Jim Plum. Yeah, your, your guy. Wasn't he? Wasn't he? Uh, Pastorini Dan, wasn't a Ram, Dan Pastorini, just another good Italian guy. Yeah, exa yeah. yeah exactly. Um, but yeah, so they had Jim. They had Jim Plunkett and Pastorini, so they were the last wow. team that had the number one and number three overall picks on the same team. So nice, and, love uh, it. 
I think watch out for Calvin Austin and uh, my man George Pickens for the Steelers this year. Okay. Okay. Very, very interesting. All right. My parting shot is uh, in a week where Von Miller decided to tell the world he would have taken less to go play for Jerry Jones in Dallas and then uh, took an absolutely ridiculously overpaid contract to go to the Buffalo Bills, leaving the world champion Los Angeles Rams. I just wanted to say to Von just one thing. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be easy playing in Aaron Donald's shadow. Just can't be easy. And I'll leave it Play at that. Together, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. So thank you, gentlemen. This has been a ton of fun. And MTO with the uh, big comment. Uh, yeah. Loving the Roberto edition this week. And we Thanks, certainly MTO. appreciate MTO yeah, yeah. as well, who uh, yeah, always MTO brings it. Great. Yeah. Uh, this is a lot of fun. We're back to, into our weekly schedule. We've missed a couple of weeks over this summer, which it's really hard to warn people about that. But uh, guys, this was fantastic. Love the uh, three guy, the three ring circus here. So we'll be doing this again. And folks, uh, we really appreciate you joining us on the Dirty Pocket. If you're watching on Twitch, please subscribe. You watch the podcast after it's all said and done on YouTube. Like, subscribe. You can find us everywhere. For myself, from the Gridiron Icon podcast, and the scout who is writing for Sports Illustrated Jets and has some other sneaky stuff he'll announce soon. And Roberto, Pittsburgh native. Yes, sir. We, we want to say thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week. Yeah, thank you all for having me. Appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank thank you for being on, Roberto. It's been awesome. Yeah. It's kind yeah, of a sneak always. preview of what the War Room is going to be like someday. This is awesome. Hey. Yep. There you go. Stick around, Roberto. Thanks, folks. We will see you next week.